Now, mini history lesson. Its software is the granddaddy developer of the first-person shooter genre, starting with Wolfenstein 3D, the original Doom, and Quake. These were the heavy hitters before Half-Life and Halo came along. The plots were paper-thin, shooting Nazis, shooting demons, shooting aliens. The actual shooting was where id shined. Blood, gore, and violence were their trademark tools. The last two Doom games were about a space marine killing demons on Mars. It decided the series was due for a reboot in 2004, so out came Doom 3, a first-person shooter about a space marine killing demons on Mars. That quote about a losing team deciding to turn themselves around 360 degrees comes to mind. Alright, the graphics have obviously gotten a needed upgrade, and there's actually a decent narrative structure, if still a bit thin. You, nameless space marine, arrive at a Mars science outpost for your first tour of duty. Slab bulkhead. You spend the first 20 or so minutes getting a tutorial on your pistol, flashlight, and PDA, when right in the middle of your first assignment, a shockwave rocks the facility, monsters pop up, and the staff start turning into zombies. Does this sound familiar to another old game? That's right. Id is cribbing notes from Valve, the new head of the first-person shooter class. They're waiting for you, Gordon. In the test chamber. While we're on the subject, Id decided ripping off one game wasn't enough and decided we needed to pick up and listen to audio logs, a gameplay mechanic nicked right out of System Shock. Now, there's nothing really bad about this. Since we hardly ever find anyone still alive to give us plot exposition, audio logs are a good way to flesh out the background and create characters out of corpses, to coin a phrase. Doom 3 sadly doesn't have that. It's 90% boring chatter, 5% plot, 5% door codes. Anyway, back to the game itself. As updates go, it's pretty good. The graphics are up to modern standards, and the action is as violent and satisfying as ever. But there's a snag. No jibbing. Blowing an enemy into juicy, meaty bits was always very satisfying in the older games. But in D3, the bodies seem to be made out of red pixie sticks and dissolve upon death. Where's the blood? Where's the torso chunks? Key fetching also makes a return, though they try to hide it a bit. Instead of keys, you pick up other people's PDAs to enhance your security clearance. That is, until the game gives up and gives you keys anyway. Once you find said keys, you'll have some issues finding the door you need to open again because the level designer subscribed to the three C's of level design. Confusing, claustrophobic corridors. Well over three quarters of this game is in dark, narrow, and identical hallways, which means you'll get lost more frequently than you'd like. It'd be nice if your PDA had a map screen or something. Also, the door codes you find in PDAs are pretty useless. Yes, there are code-locked supply cabinets everywhere, but nine times out of ten, you'll find the code a mere five feet away, making the whole security system seem pointless. I guess the writers really wanted you to stop and read their boring email stories in the middle of your demon slaying. You'll actually be looking forward to going to hell, because the level design actually gets interesting then. The bits where the boring science facility seems to be getting absorbed by the demonic dark world are the best and the creepiest levels by far. Speaking of darkness, you may have noticed that you can't see shit in these videos. Well, it's not the gamma correction, that's just how it is. Doom 3 is dark. Dark, dark, dark. You start off with a flashlight, but it acts like a weapon, so actually drawing a gun, even your one-handed pistol, puts you back in darkness. I guess I was supposed to make the game creepy by not seeing what's attacking, but when it happens all the time, it stops being scary and becomes irritation mixed with eye strain. I cheated a bit in this playthrough and installed the duct tape mod, which assumes there must be a roll of tape somewhere on Mars and lashes a small flashlight to your shotgun and machine gun. The overall arsenal of weapons are fairly solid, bringing over everything old and a few new toys like the boss-killing Soul Cube. Chainsaws are back, but their usefulness is questionable. You'll even find emails from the NPCs that question the point of chainsaws on Mars. The plasma gun would have been my favorite weapon if it didn't make this pathetic pew-pew-pew noise. Apart from that, the remaining weapons are as satisfying as ever. The room-clearing chain gun, the explosive power of the rocket launcher, even the classic BFG 9000! Though it hogs the screen a bit too much for my liking. The Berserker power-up makes a return, but it only shows up twice by my count. What it does is turn you invincible for a short time, but leaves you with no weapons other than your fists, which turn into one-hit-kill hands of death. Sadly, it's not an awesome I AM A MAN punch fest because your character screams at the top of his lungs the entire time, making it feel less like berserk mode and more like whiny hissy fit mode. I usually don't mention sound in the game because I don't want to step on pause toes, but I do want to give credit to the great voice acting crew on this game. Almost everyone is exceptional, but I did have a little adjustment period with it because I was recognizing everyone in the cast from Vampire Bloodlines, just minus John DiMaggio, plus Wally Wingert, Steve Bloom, and Rob Paulson. 
The game's sound is great overall, but it's a bit too... quiet. What I mean is the game music is incredibly lacking. The Doom and Quake series are known for having awesome, iconic, memorable soundtracks. There were maybe two tracks at the beginning and end of the game that fit the game style, but overall there is only this bland, creepy background music. Where's the Rammstein-esque soundtrack? My biggest complaint about the game comes after the first third of the game. Negative reinforcement. What I mean is being punished for playing the game normally. Let's say you're hurt and looking for a health kit and some armor. You see some over in the corner of the room and naturally pick it up. Then three imps spawn in to attack you, leaving you more damage than you were before you picked up the medkit. The overall theme of the game seems to be jump scares, having stuff pop out of nowhere at every opportunity, leaving you a nervous wreck by the end of your play session. The worst example of this are the zombie closets. Locked doors and panels that serve no function but to open up and throw a zombie at you when you're right next to it. Doing that once or twice would have been alright, but it just happens everywhere! There's nothing really wrong with that, but the overuse of the trick makes it more tedious than exciting. But spawning enemies in just for picking up items seems like a real dick move. Picking up items is half the point of a first-person shooter, along with shoot enemies. I might as well mention the expansion, Resurrection of Evil. As you might expect, it's more of the same deal, but with a few new guns of dubious usefulness and a dumber plot. Bold big flank. For some reason, the Marines go back to the hellhole of Mars and pluck out another ancient artifact, restarting the whole demonic invasion. The upshot is that the new artifact gives you bullet time, which is used in a lot of painfully bad timing puzzles. It's also powered by harvesting the souls of dead co-workers, which doesn't seem evil in the slightest. Oh, and it really wanted to get another game ripoff in there, so they stole the gravity gun from Half-Life 2, only it barely works on anything. Definitely skip this one if you can. Overall, Doom 3 is actually a lot of fun if you want a good Monster Mash shoot 'em up Blowing apart demons and zombies is a joy no matter what game you're playing, and id is a master at it. This is a game where right after you finish off a boss, another wave of monsters comes after you until you just want to shout out the tone should have been more even, and the story could have been less heavy-handed pointlessness. But you pick up a game like Doom for some hardcore shooter action, and that's what you'll get. Plus some audio logs. On a final note, I'd like to know what Carmack's obsession is with gears, pistons, and pumps. Those things pop up everywhere. This is supposed to be a space lab in the future, not the Industrial Revolution. Maybe his next game should have a steampunk motif. Just saying. trying to prove here anyway I'm studying the effect of negative reinforcement on FPS ability the effect I'll tell you what the effect is it's pissing me off